Hello everyone, and thank you for coming back to yet another episode of The Gloving Paradigm. I am your host, Peter, aka LPD8 Dubuque, and this week, I'm gonna get a lot of hate mail for this because people don't like it when I do this, but you know what? Sometimes when you get things to happen within the community, you still have to strike while the iron's hot, and this week is no different. <laughs> so, recently, in a couple, as time of this recording, it's only been about two days since it's occurred, I want to say, there was interesting stirrings happening within the community, and it's revolving around the competitive circuit, and I can already tell the majority of you guys are already clicking off. Run. Please do not click off this episode. Allow me, allow me to explain. You know, I, I understand that People don't want to hear me talk about the competitive scene because somebody who never really done anything in the competitive scene, why on earth would anyone want to listen to that person? I get it. I understand that you don't take my take my word and my consider you know my thoughts of consideration when it comes to the competitive scene into heart, just because the lack of my experience in the competitive scene of gloving as it is. But like I keep telling everyone. I do have experience in a competitive format and in a competitive setting outside of gloving, which still, in my opinion, applies very well to a competitive setting of gloving. Like, I, you know, it's just... Why are we still here? Just to suffer? I just don't know why people have such a hard time understanding that. But, we're just gonna get right into this topic, okay? So, we're gonna be talking about judging in a competitive format and why we need to talk about it. Because we clearly are at a stage in our time period when it comes to gloving right now that we need to actually really work on getting things under control. Well, I'm going to say under control, but we need, we need to start figuring th- some things out. And we need to start like actually doing something about this to you know, make this a lot easier for a lot of other people. So, what is it that I'm going to be talking about is basically, you know... Just the overall, just how to be a judge. Well, not how to be a judge, but just the whole idea of you know judges within the gloving community that you know are needed and seriously seeing some of a lack thereof. So, how are we and why are we talking about this? As well, there was a lovely Facebook post in the lovely gloving group called the Glovers Lounge. You guys probably already see where this is going, but. I'm not going to say specifically who, but someone brought it up that the idea that we have judges who have been in the gloving community less than three years should not necessarily be judging the competitions due to the fact of their lack of experience within the community and within the craft. That it's, you know, difficult for anyone to take their word for how they, you know, tabulate their scores. You know, and there was a lot of things that went into it. You know, they, they, people were saying, you know, judges with inadequate experiences, quote unquote. And, you know, so many people are claiming things like, you know, only older glovers, people who've been doing this like five plus years should, should be judges since they have the experience. And, you know, some of them have to, you know, have competition experience in gloving competitions, no other gloving, you know, no other competition format whatsoever, apparently. And, of course, you get the small section of the community who is sitting there with their, you know, their picket signs, pitchforks, and torches saying that you can't judge art. Do you honestly think you're fucking funny? And, of course, I'm not just, I'm just not going to get into that portion because I feel like that is its own separate episode that I don't think you guys want want me to get into right now. So, we're going to stay focused on this whole judge thing and why this is very important for us to settle in the community because... If we don't get this settled, then we're not going to be able to move forward with the community, basically. Okay. So, how did we get here? How did we get to this discussion? There's so many variables that you can take into account. But some of the things I take into consideration when it comes to why we're at this point right now is, you know, when it comes to a lot of the older generations of Glovers, such as like myself, who started back in like 2010, maybe 2009 or prior, not a lot of them are still around. And, you know, I don't blame them for not sticking around, and it's not because I think that the community is bad, it's far from it. It's that 
some people just they have their lives take a different direction it takes a spin and it goes off somewhere else you know things take off and you know the person decide you know they make decisions and you know things tend to work out for them or not work out for them it all depends on what they're going for you know so to me where people are like oh only older glovers should be judges and it's just like no because most of them are probably not around and any of them that are still around probably going to tell you that they don't want to judge because they're tired of judging and they you know they kind of did their thing and want to be done with it you know and i don't blame them you know if it's not something that you felt like you wanted to do long term then it's something that you didn't want to do long term and anyone who wants to disagree with that i'm sorry you feel that way but you know people that's how people are sometimes you know and you just got to accept that the other thing i'll definitely say there's this lack of standardization like yes a lot of people who have been entrenched and enfranchised within this community have a pretty good sense of like what makes a good light show, what makes a bad light show, what, you know, how to quantify and tabulate the scores in terms of like complexity, storytelling, use of space, blah, 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 blah. You pretty much have heard me say this dance over and over again. But uh, the, this idea that we don't, that we don't have this standard for for gloving and in terms of the competition not just gloving in general just in competition setting you know just keep that in mind are you crazy are you out of your mind and we just don't have this you know it's not standardized you know we don't there's nothing out there that's telling people like this is how it's supposed to be and this is how you're supposed to judge upon it you know it, it to me that's just it's a, a lack of content for people to you know especially educational content for that matter of how to judge now I will certainly say I am not going to be the person who's going to sit here and tell you that you should, how you should be judging the competitions and how you need to go about it. I would actually want to ask the community themselves, you know, to answer that question, especially on this episode, if he so chooses. One of the other things I definitely want to point out is that when it comes to judging and people wanting to learn how to judge and the people who have been judging for a while, now, disclaimer, I'm not saying everybody's like this. But there has been a tendency of a gatekeeper mentality. And I don't know why this is still a thing. Why? 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 Okay, I, I don't get it. I'll probably never get it. And anyone who's going to tell me, it's like, well, you were there in 2010. You know how it was with the tough love mentality? Yeah, I understand. That's how it was in the beginning. It does not need to be like that today. Just pointing that out. And here comes the hate mail. That's all I'm going to say right now. Anyways, uh, one little caveat I'm going to just point out that I think someone's going to suggest that this is also the reason why we got here. But I'm not claiming that this is, you know, one of the culprits, but somebody will point it out. And somebody's going to say that the fall of IGC is another reason why we're having this kind of problem when it comes to judges. And I get that. And I don't think that's necessarily true when it comes to IGC. IGC was its own thing and... I'm not saying that it is a failed experiment or anything like that. It just, it was a product of its time, okay? And that's pretty much how far I'm going to go into it. I, th I IGC is going to need its own episode as well. That's just how, that's how much of a rabbit hole of information you're going to have to understand when it comes to IGC. So, with all that stuff in mind of like, why we're talking about this, how we got to this point of talking about this, we're going to now talk about pretty much a lot of the community backlash ideas I've seen and what observations I've made on my own what observations I've seen about the community and some of the things I just I don't understand why this is but one one major thing I noticed is that a lot of people want results but nobody wants to put in the time and effort to get that work done in order to achieve said results and if you think that I'm being a little bit harsh I can understand why but let me put it into perspective for you. I've, I've met a good amount of newcomers who really, really want to get into this craft. And that's really great. All power to them, you know, I'm all for that stuff. Here's the thing that I see very often is that they are really trying to get to that advanced level where they are just jamming complex, intricate designs and concepts out the wazoo. And I get it because those concepts 
intrigue you. You are enthralled by those concepts and you want to master those concepts, and I get it. But they don't put in the time and effort in terms of the basics and foundations that you need to establish to help you build up those muscle tissues and all those muscle forms and muscle memory and all that stuff so your body can be able to pull off these advanced concepts without you having to put so much work into it. Unfortunately though, they like to skip the basics and try to go straight to the advance. You know, they are trying to run when they haven't even learned to walk. And I get it, it's because you just wanna get right into it and you know, don't blame you, but that's one of the things that tends to transfer over to other aspects of the gloving community in my opinion. And at least from my observation, that is what I've seen, is that there's a lot of people out there who want these results done, but no one wants to put in the time and effort to actually get it done. And I get it because how some people tend to be when it comes to this kind of stuff. And I don't understand why people think that, you know, not putting in the work gets you the results. I don't think I'll ever understand that. But, you know, to each its own, I guess. Three days later. Another big thing in terms of the backlash is people have this idea that we are objectifying something that is subjective. Meaning we're trying to judge art. And again, I don't want to go super far into detail about this, but that's not necessarily what we're trying to do, okay? If you, again, this is where I feel like a lot of people just turn off and not listen because it doesn't involve gloving, yet I'm using this to help apply to gloving. So please keep that in mind when I talk about this. But when it comes to ballroom dance in the competition format, it is not about expression and it is not about what surprise moves and complex things you have come up with to wow the judges. They don't care about that. In ballroom competition, what they care about is if you are able to do the moves in the correct manner. Are you able to have your feet pointed in the right direction? Do you have your shoulders, arms, elbows, head, torso, body parts, everything in the perfect frame that it needs to be? If it is, you get the point. If it's not, you don't get the point. That is how simple ballroom dance competition is. Now, do I think ballroom dance competitions are easy to do? No. They're extremely easy to understand on paper, but they're really hard to do. And I will tell you, from my husband's experience, that is really hard and it's almost just as cutthroat as any other competition you will ever enter. Even though I would say that gloving competition has such low stakes that it shouldn't feel cutthroat at all. But that's just me. So one last thing that I feel like a lot of members of the community need to stop doing in terms of backlash is these misguided qualifications. You know what I mean? like. Just because somebody's been in the community for X amount of years does not mean that they're qualified to judge. Yes, they've been entrenched enough that they can tell what how it looks good and how it looks bad. But I've met people who've been in this for five plus years and don't know how to finger roll because they never took the time in learning how to finger roll. You know, so it, it, it's crazy how people want to use certain things to like use as qualifications like time and service. Time in competitions, you know, and time in festivals and ven venue endeavors. And I just, like, to me, it's like, wait, what? No, no that's not how it works. <laughs> that's not the... What other judging competition format of any other form of, you know, just competition in general, do, do they use it as qualification? That doesn't make any sense. So I, I don't understand where people get this idea because... Like my husband has told me, when it comes to ballroom competition, it's not about being expressive or creative or anything like that. Like, yes, there are competitions that allow for that and go for that. But when it comes to traditional ballroom dance competitions, to him, he told me it's, the, it's all the elements of a traditional dance for the competition. All right. If you're able to show that you mastered all of the elements of the traditional dance, you will get your points. And that's why I feel as a flawless segue into the next point of how the, of the ideas that we need to fix. Okay, when it comes to the judging program, first of all, the one thing I'm gonna say is that we need to create a standard. And what I mean by creating a standard is that we need to create a standard of where it's merited in terms of the competition format. How a finger roll is supposed to look needs to be conveyed clearly so the judges know what they're supposed to be looking for in order for this to work. 
Again, if ballroom dance can have this for their competition, so can we. I don't know how much I'm going to have to scream that off the top of my roof. Hello, it's me. Like, for crying out loud, I don't understand why the community gets so up in arms when I suggest stuff like this. Because it's like, well, it's not a dance form, but it is a dance form. Yet it's a flow art. Yet flow art is a dance form. And it's just like, it doesn't matter to me. Gloving is gloving. And it's going to be what it is as gloving. It's not a dance form. It's not an art form. It is the entity that's called gloving. All right. It is a culture. So creating a standard where all the elements of the traditional dance are being represented and tabulated okay for the competition format how a finger roll is supposed to look is we're supposed we need to set the standard for that how tutting is supposed to be you know are they making the angles correct are their arms placement correct are they doing things that just don't line up properly or you know there are things that you need to take in consideration you know now granted i've had people tell me that the variations within concepts they're you know you can't sit there and try to codify it but we we are trying to set a standard for for competition all right the other thing i will i will certainly say in terms of fixing this issue is having a judge certification program no one has ever done that no one has ever done that in the history of dota i don't understand how this is such a difficult task for people to grasp you you want you want qualified judges create a qualification program to show that they are qualified if they pass the qualification test then they're qualified i don't see if you have a problem with you know a judge that is qualified at least you know that they went through the program to become certified you can have appeals within you know disputes when it comes to judge scores and stuff like that we have that it's even in the rule books you can ask for a different judge you know what i mean so keep that in mind another another point of note read all the rules when it comes to these competitions especially if it's an igl sanctioned competition all right one last thing i'm going to suggest when it comes to judges and trying to get judges to be a normal thing you need to have a way to incentivize them to be judges and allow them to spend their time doing this okay it's one of those things that boggles my mind that people kind of ask people to volunteer to be judges and you're not compensating them for their time in any capacity whatsoever. I, it's another weird thing I've seen about the community when it comes to things like this where it's just like people should feel obligated to do this stuff for free and just be happy that they had the experience to do so. Like, that just doesn't make any sense to me. Like, why? You know, why should it, somebody be, you know, giving up their time for, for you know, essentially nothing? Like, clout? It, that doesn't make any sense, you know? I, so, that's how I think I feel like when it comes to a lot of, especially a lot of the older judges who've been doing it for a while maybe they just don't want to do it anymore because they don't really see the value in doing it it's just like you know what i mean you know too much heartache without any payoff is just not something that people are going to want so if you want to have like qualified judges who are going to be consistently judging these competitions how many competitions we have per year you might want to incentivize them to be a judge you know uh, if it's an in-person competition you know maybe Offering them free meals, you know, just something to compensate for their time. Now, I'm going to say this very clearly. You want to make sure that the compensation you're giving to these people are adequate to what they're doing. I, I don't <laughs> I don't think giving them a peanut butter sandwich for spending eight hours hanging out with people in a small cramped room trying to judge all these different shows all at once is compensation enough. No. Come on, people. Let's be a little bit reasonable here. You know, it's it's not that hard. But yeah, that's that's pretty much it for my episode. Those are the ideas that I've had. This this is where we have gotten to right now, and it's it's kind of shocking to see that we we have this this kind of I don't want to say a dilemma, but it's a conundrum in my opinion when it comes to judges. And like, I'm not going to get into details about the post, the Facebook post, or the person who posted, and you know the details of everything. I'm 
that's not the point. What the point is is that yes, we have a clear a clear problem when it comes to having, you know, adequate amount of judges and having them available to, you know, perform the judges that they need to do. You know what I mean? Like it's just it's crazy that we have gotten to this point that we actually have to sit down and talk about this in a serious capacity because no one really wanted to. You know what I mean? Like, you know, there have been other people who have come out and said that, you know, they spend time training their judges to get them all on the same page for their competitions. Those are the people I want to help create the standard so we can have these judges be certified. Now, I will certainly say this. If there's going to be one person one entity one group whatever you want to say whatever influence within the community that's going to actually pull off this judge certification program and actually get a standard to follow it's going to be one website and that's yougotmoves.com okay if you don't know what yougotmoves.com is it is an e-learning academy for gloving they have an entire library of tutorials that are absolutely for free but you also have a paid service where you can pay a well-known glover to spend some time with you and learn how to glove. It's usually anywhere from like 30 minutes to an hour and it's not a huge fee. Do not think, sit there and think that they're gonna charge you $200 to hang out with them for an hour. That's no, they're not therapists, okay? They're <laughs> they're just like people, just like you and me. And it's, you know, they're giving their, up their time to hang out with you and help you learn, you know what I mean? So if there's gonna be anyone or any influence in the community that is going to pull this off, it will be yougotmoves.com. Are they going to do it? I, I don't know. I can't really speak for them. I certainly hope so, though, because holy crap, we need to get this fixed. And one of the things I will certainly say that YouGotMoves.com has been doing that is pushing it in that direction is 4KC. Where I'm hoping that they keep pursuing 4KC and allow this to become the new IGC and allow us to you know, have that kind of thing back in our community again because... We are seriously lacking that. But yes, that's pretty much all I have to say about my episode. That's pretty much all I need to go on about this thing. It's it really seriously, people, it is not that hard to solve this problem. You know, it's just people need to put in the work to get it done. It does not just happen on its own. Okay, I will certainly tell you that as a content creator myself, I have to put in the work if I want to get the results I want about my content. So if you want those kind of results, you gotta put in the work too just as simple as that however if you have any questions that i did not cover in this episode you can ask me at the various outlets that i do have first of all i do have a facebook page called the gloving paradigm you can always hit me up there i'm also on reddit under the username mutton chop guy and i'm also on wwg discord chat under mutton chop guy as well those are other places you can hit me up at of course i do have an email which is mutton chop guy at gmail.com and of course, I have my own Discord server, which will be linked in this episode's description if you want to hit me up there. It's absolutely for free, and it doesn't have any problem for you. Now, I will certainly say you have other places that you can follow me on. I do have a YouTube channel, which all these social media links will be in this episode's description. So if you want to follow me on any of those platforms, hit me up there. I have a Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. And lastly, but not least... Oh shit! Here we go again. If you like the content that I create and are considering of helping me make better, stronger content, please consider of donating at least one dollar per month on Patreon. As low as one dollar a month, you get early access to behind-the-scene content. It allows you to have your own personal Discord chat to hang out with me as a patron, so you actually get more influence in telling me what kind of episodes you want to hear from me. And course if i hit my first goal of a thousand dollars a month i'll be able to do this full time and i'll shave up my mutton chops yes my first goal will be if it's achieved i will shave off my mutton chops and i'll plaster all over the internet so you guys can look at this adorable baby face that everyone keeps this deacon is 16 years old even though i'm almost 30 seriously people you do not understand how annoying it is when somebody calls you a child at 29 you just want to rip their heads off. Just saying. Anyways, but yes, those are all the various places you can hit me up at. Please do not hesitate to ask me any questions. If you, ha Even if it doesn't even regard this episode, do not hesitate to ask. I am always willing to help you guys out. Do not be afraid to ask me questions or don't even be afraid to tell me comments. If you think that my, my content sucks, let me know. 
I would like to know why it sucks and how I can work on it to make it better. But I need you guys to tell me these things, you know. So, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I do want to thank everybody who's liked the page so far and who's shown their support to the show. If it wasn't for you guys, I probably would still not be doing this. But, you know, I, I made a commitment and I'm going to stick to it. So, I just want to say thank you to everyone who's liked the page and who's shown their support. I absolutely love you guys because you guys are all absolutely amazing. But... I am your host, Peter, a.k.a. LPD Dubuque, and I'll see you guys all next week.